Good evening on this Sunday, the wonderful, beautiful month of April, on April 11th, and this Sunday evening service brought to you from Walhalla First Baptist Church's YouTube page, or through our YouTube service at least. Hope it'll be a blessing to you. I want to read some scriptures for you. We sent out a link for the uh, song, which was from the King James Boys. If you get a chance, watch that link. That'll be on the Facebook page for you to watch separately. And uh, we couldn't combine the two together, but we'll share this message with you. And then uh, you can check the song out if you haven't already heard it much more than I asked for. Well, we're going to be reading from the book of Mark, chapter 7. And then we'll share some thoughts on these verses. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and this is starting with verse 31. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis, and they bring unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude, and put his fingers in his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed, and saith unto him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, so much more a great deal, they published it, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Father, thank you for your word today. May it speak to us with great encouragement and with hope, and may our walk please you. May the things we do please you. Bless the reading of your word and all the ears that listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're reading here of one of the many encounters Jesus had with folks who had a disability, uh, a health issue, which greatly impaired their ability to function. In this case, we have an individual who is near the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and Jesus comes up on the Sea of Galilee to a place called Decapolis. And uh, the people there are familiar with and aware of what Jesus can do and has done decides that they need to bring this friend of theirs, the individual who uh, is unable to hear. He had an impediment in his speech, and he was deaf. So apparently this individual was deaf from birth because he had not been able to uh, form any words based on any kind of memory that he had. And whatever formation of the words that he was giving based on what he could see people do and what he was able to imitate uh, had an, an impediment and he was not able to speak clearly. Uh, this reminds us so much of individuals who uh, are lost and uh, aren't able to hear uh, spiritual things. We read the scriptures often, let him that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But there are unfortunately so many people who have either willfully or through the events and experiences they've had, or they've hardened their heart, uh, they have refused to hear what God has to say. They've essentially stopped their ears. Uh, I can remember uh, when we were little, uh, my little sister sticking her fingers in her ear and, and saying things so that she couldn't hear what you were saying. She didn't like what we were saying or maybe she didn't agree with what we were saying and she just put those fingers in her ear and la, 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 la and, you, and she couldn't hear what we were saying. That's the image I get, I, I think, of a lot of people who are spiritually deaf. We have so many examples of people with health issues and, and impairments. And the scripture is blind for spiritually. They're blind, crippled people that can't, don't have a spiritual walk and uh, withered parts of their body, reminding us of their, their withered spiritual life, their withered souls uh, that need to be brought back to life. And here is one where an individual can neither hear or speak very well. Now, I know there are a lot of people that are lost, that think they have the ability of discernment. They have the ability to perceive things. And on some levels, I guess, because they may have an education, may even have some degrees, 
may be learned people, uh, they've reached a point where they're able to take information and and they're able to perceive it and and, and even use it for would be fruitful and profitable things. I'm sure there are many lost teachers in our schools across the country. I'm sure there are many lost professors in our universities. I'm sure there are many doctors who have the skill to be able to uh, save lives and, and do good things uh, because of information they've been able to, to learn through hearing and seeing and through the use of their five senses. The doctor that saved my life years ago when I had a plastic tube put in my heart, I had a ruptured aorta from a car accident and uh, a number of other physical anomalies. My intestines were ruptured, my diaphragm was ruptured, and my aorta was ruptured. And a, uh, a Muslim fellow who did not believe in God, who worshipped Allah, uh, was able to go in and, and use the technology and the knowledge and the expertise and skill that he had uh, to put everything back together in there for me so that I might live on for a few years. But what we're talking about here in terms of spiritual discernment is being understand truths that lead to eternal life, truths that lead us to life eternal and, and help us to have a relationship with God. Uh, there are many people that even claim to have a relationship with God. They might even use the name Christian or they might use the, use the uh, idea that they're religious or spiritual. But until you've known the true love of God, the love of God brought to us by the free grace described in the scriptures that is delivered to us by faith, uh, say by grace, excuse me, through faith, uh, that gift of God uh, that we get because of no merit whatsoever and provided by and paid for by the shed blood of Jesus Christ because we have recognize ourselves as a sinner, we have uh, subsequently repented, and then and only then uh, can the power of God take over and, and save us. Uh, repenting doesn't save us. Getting baptized doesn't save us. Uh, even praying doesn't save us. Uh, the blood of Jesus Christ saves us. But until we become lost, we can't be saved. And so there are many people that cannot hear the true message of God. They have, in essence, stopped their ears. And while they may find many avenues of, of profit and use in this physical world, their spiritual world has been subordinated. It's been cut off. And Jesus here, as he meets these individuals, they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in speech. And they, they beseech Jesus. They, what they really wanted to do is they had a plan in their head. They figured they can bring this guy to Jesus, and Jesus can just put his hand on him, and uh, it'll all be taken care of. And they're probably acting on either the stories that they've heard, or in some cases, uh, the experience that they witnessed themselves, where Jesus came to an individual uh, who was in need of healing and laid his hands on him. There were other instances where they just reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And uh, there are other instances where Jesus just spoke the words, just used the words, and uh, they became healed. Uh, but there were times where Jesus actually touched the individuals, laid his hands on them, uh, and they were healed. That should serve as a reminder to us that God's actions are his, and he chooses how to act and when to act in the ways that he wants to act. A lot of times we box God in and we expect him to be able to follow uh, our uh, schematic understanding, our our wiring of how he should work. And these people came up and said, Lord, just put your hand on him. Well, for reasons which are known to God, he decided to do things differently that day. And that can be a reminder to you that as you uh, pray with God and you walk with God and you ask God for things, that he may not act according to your preconceived uh, notions of how he should do. Uh, he may not he may not answer your prayer exactly the way you want him to. He may not uh, take care of your problem, your infirmity, your sickness, uh, your money problems, your uh, social issues, whatever it is that is plaguing you and and disrupting your life. 
that you put before him and ask him uh, to, to take care of it. He may not do it in the way that you have preconceived. These individuals, have, and I'm not even saying they're wrong. I'm not even accusing them of anything. But the lesson here is to teach us that even though people may have preconceived notions about how God ought to act when requested, when, when a, a, a request is put before him, we can, we can always remember that he may choose to answer it a different way. He may do something completely different than what we're expecting. So be prepared for that. It is not wrong to ask God for things. It is not wrong to ask God for healing. It is not wrong to ask God for help with uh, troubles in your family or any other situation that may perplex you. But just be prepared, uh, as these individuals had happened to them, that they may not get the action exactly the way they, they expected it. They expected Jesus to put his hand on him and that he would be taken care of and he'd be healed. And Jesus is prepared to heal this individual. But this very unique story we read about here in the Bible uh, reminds us that God acts in mysterious and sometimes different ways. In ways that, that may not even uh, fit into our, our way of thinking. When they brought this individual to Jesus, the Bible said he took him aside from the multitude. He separated it from everybody else. You know, there are a lot of people that, that are involved in in these spiritual encounters on TV, which are done in, in large uh, quantities uh, where, where there's uh, audiences. Uh, these so-called faith healers on TV who grab people's canes and walkers and throw them to the side and, and do all sorts of so-called amazing things. And, and how often are they done not only in front of large multitudes, but in front of video cameras and, and things, and they're preserved and published on television to sort of promote their ministry. Now, I would be the last person to say that nobody ever got any help from any uh, evangelist or preacher. But what I do read in the scriptures is that if somebody is sick or troubled, they're to call the elders of the church together. And I don't read of any incidents in the scripture where someone was publicly uh, in front of an audience or in front of a large group of people uh, healed. Uh, but uh, different preachers and different churches do them different ways. What I'm saying here is Jesus was going to separate himself from the large crowd. There were times, I'm sure, that Jesus did things uh, in front of people. Uh, he's the Savior. He's the great physician. He can do that if he wants to. But in this particular case, he took them aside. My son's been preaching a series of messages, if you'd like to check out sometime on Unity Baptist Church in Summertown, Tennessee. He's got a whole series published on what God does when nobody's looking. And so he decides that he's going to separate this deaf man with the impediment of speech from the multitude of people and, and take them and put him in, in, isolated from everywhere else. And then he does something even more interesting, even more out of our framework, uh, out of our so-called comfort zone. The Bible says he took him aside from the multitude and then he put his fingers into his ears. Uh, you probably, like most people, wouldn't uh, enjoy somebody sticking their fingers in your ears. And uh, some people do that to aggravate people and to give them a hard time. But for this particular day, if you're standing next to Jesus and Jesus wants to put his fingers in your ear, you ought to let him do it. And I don't see any indication that this man seemed to show any discomfort or any kind of uh, negative response to Jesus doing that. He knew he was deaf, and he knew that, that Jesus knew he was deaf, and uh, he, was, he was aware of the fact that uh, he was in front of somebody who had a reputation uh, for being able to heal people. So Jesus puts his fingers into his ears. But then he does something even more different. After he puts his fingers in the man's ears, th then he spits. Now that, that has a negative connotation in most situations. I can remember growing up, uh, us, us boys getting, and, and we didn't chew tobacco, but we just got into the bad habit of, of spitting all the time. And we were forever being asked to quit doing that. Don't do that. I can even remember on the streets of one particular town I went to, it had a sign up that said, no spitting. Now that may have been talking about chewing tobacco spitting, or it may have just been talking about just plain, you know, spitting out of your throat and stuff. But the, the fact of the matter was, it's not, it's, it's kind of a, 
uh, a, a disgusting practice by our measure. But I want to say this, if Jesus wants to spit and he's working to heal somebody, uh, he can do what he wants to do, even if it doesn't fit our framework of thinking. So Jesus puts his fingers in his ear and then he spits. And then he does the, the third thing in this process, which is, is a little bit different than what we might expect. And he put, he touched his tongue. He touched the man's tongue. He had a an impediment in speech. And so he, he touches his tongue. I can't begin to explain to you why Jesus chose this mode of operation for what he was about to do, except for the possible fact that he just wanted to teach people uh, that he's the creator, he's the healer, and his methods are his own. Uh, They may not fit uh, the expected behavior pattern that uh, we may have organized and framed in our mind. And I'm sure as they were looking on, there may have been a, an individual or two of the group that brought him to Jesus that, you know, leaned over to one of the other and said, what's he doing? You know, I, I thought he would just touch him, but he doesn't. He puts his fingers in his ear, then he spits, then he touches the man's tongue. And then he says those magical words, that is be open. Translated, that means be open. His ears are going to be open. The string of his tongue is going to be loosened. Straightway his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loose, and he spake plain. I want to suggest to you and help you understand that this is a double miracle. This man was healed of two things. The first thing he was healed of was whatever issue he had related to his ears, whether he had a malformation inside his eardrums, or whether he had some sort of disease, or whether he just simply had some sort of uh, thing that kept him from being able to hear that was born that way. I don't know, but that was fixed. That was healed. He was able to hear, and he was able to hear perfectly. He wouldn't need a hearing aid uh, after this of any kind or additional support. But the next thing is, when a person is young, and then they're in those first five years of their developmental life, they're they're hearing the, the oral stimulus that goes into their ears, And it wires their brain to be able to understand what speech is and how to reproduce it. Uh, Human beings, unlike the animals that we're aware of, are given a communication device in their brain that's wired to be able to not only hear uh, speech and language, but to be able to remember it and and put it away in the schematics of our brain to be able to reproduce it and use it later. There's so much that goes on with what human speech is how to use the tongue and how to use the lips and how to make the the particular sounds. Uh, There are certain sounds that that we make that we couldn't reproduce if we couldn't hear them and we didn't know uh, what was going on. So he's automatically given all the wiring that he needs, all the schematic uh, setup inside of his brain to now be able to produce speech as if he had heard speech all of his life. God gives him that instant language acquisition device that he has in his brain to be able to speak clearly. And so he's afforded a second miracle that he receives all the education, all the experience, all the the stimulus, all the the wiring in his brain uh, automatically and miraculously that would have taken years to wire his brain to be able to, to learn these words. And now he can speak clearly. That's a double miracle that God did for this man. Uh, Jesus said, be open, and his ears were open, and he spake plain. And then he charged individuals that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, so much more, a great deal, they published it. Now, Jesus already knew that they were going to do what they were going to do. But he gives us this little example to show how it is that people uh, seem to want something from God, but then when he gives them instructions and direction about how to respond to it, uh, they seem to be uh, incapable of following his direction. Now you go to God and you ask him for something and then he gives you a direction about it and you just can't seem to follow that. And uh, their their tellings and their repeatings and publishing it went on, went a long way to, to magnify Jesus as an individual uh, who in, in a couple of cases they actually wanted to make him a king. But as I said, Jesus was aware of the fact that they were going to publish this information, but he shows us the tendency of human being to to want something from God, but yet not want to follow his specific direction. 
a lot of people uh, are asking God for things and still find themselves to be a little bit disobedient. But he did what they asked. He didn't do it the way that they asked. He did it in his own way, in his own unique and amazing way uh, that we've read about here in the scriptures. And that's a beautiful story uh, of how God works in very different and mysterious ways that, that may even not be palatable to us as human beings, but yet God does what he does in the way that he does it. And I'm sure this man had no complaints. I'm sure when this was over with, he'd say, I, I don't think if they'd have interviewed him, that he'd have said, well, I didn't like him putting his fingers in my ears. And I didn't like it when he stuck his finger on my tongue. That's kind of kind of disgusting when he spat. Now, I don't think this individual had any complaints. And I don't think he had any problems uh, taking what God did for him and changing his life so that now he could hear, uh, he could hear the birds, he could hear, if he had family, he could hear the kids playing, he could hear music and songs. Life was going to be very, very different for him. And now he, 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 he was one of those that had ears before he couldn't hear. And now he's got ears that he can't hear with. What a wonderful thing God did for him. And the Bible says, as they published it, they were beyond measure astonished. That's a credible response. We ought to be astonished by God. I think too many people aren't astonished by God. I think too many people aren't amazed by God. Too many people aren't just overwhelmed by what God's done for them. They're sort of passive about uh, their relationship with God. They're, they're not particularly amazed. Uh, the one song wrote, wrote, I stand, in the ma stand amazed in the presence of Jesus of the Nazarene. Where's the amazement? Where's the astonishment? No wonder the world's not attracted uh, to spiritual things. When Christians are just sort of passive about what goes on, sort of nonchalant and uh, not not excited, they were astonished. And what did they say? He'd done all things well. He had done all things well. That's a beautiful statement to say that God does all things well. You know, he doesn't make any mistakes. He doesn't do anything wrong. They said this after they watched him put his fingers in a man's ear, spit and touch the man's tongue, even though they only expected him to touch him and heal him. And now, having observed what Jesus did in the unique and different way that he did it, they said he did with all things well. You can't say that about me. You can't say that about any preacher. You can't say that about any president. You can't say that about any government. You can't say anything about any celebrity or any football star or anybody else that's in this world that people look up to. Uh, any any great hero uh, that the people magnify, our military leaders, you can't say that about anybody. But they could say it about Jesus. In spite of what they had just witnessed, in a very different way, they said he had doeth all things well. He made both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. They were fully aware that Jesus had performed a double miracle on this guy. If Jesus had just healed his hearing, he still would have had an impediment in speech because he had spent his lifetime not being able to process or understand audibly the, the, the speaking that he had. But he gave him that second element of it, took care of the string of his tongue, and now he was able to speak clearly. And they say about Jesus, he doeth all things well. What's your testimony about your Savior? What's your testimony about Jesus Christ? If someone asks you about him, what do you have to say about him? Can you describe him as he doeth all things well? Or are you one of these people that live on a pity trip all the time and you're kind of sad and torn up about all the great things uh, that are going wrong in your life and the problems you have and people will go on and on, but I keep the faith. I just keep on keeping on. And they have all this sad. You know, God does all things well. He's not going to leave you any bind. And he's able to take this man who is not capable of discernment of the human language and make it so. That's a picture of God walking up and saving a man who cannot hear spiritual things, has no spiritual discernment, and then meeting his need and making it so he can hear and has ears and can hear what God is saying to him. I hope that's your situation with God, and I hope that's your stand with him, that, you, that he has healed you spiritually, and he's given you a spiritual walk, and that you know him personally. If you don't know him, get a hold of us here at Walla First Baptist Church. And we'll make an appointment, the pastor will, or one of the deacons, or myself, 
to sit down and talk to you about God so that you might be able to hear and have spiritual discernment in your life. Think of the story of this deaf man who they brought to Jesus to touch and Jesus put his fingers in his ear, spat on the ground, and then touched the man's tongue and in an amazing moment said, Be open. And he made it so he could both hear and speak all at the same time. God bless you.